Alright guys, so I promised you a quick how-to on uh, building these XT60 parallel adapters that are nice small package like this and they fit into tight spots. I did that in a couple of minutes. I'm using the XT60s from Lemon RX, not that it matters. And first thing you're going to do is just grab some pliers and you're going to spin these things so that they orient in a way that you can line everything up because if you just some of these come with the pins uh, flat like this on the same side and some come with the pins um, so that they're kind of the other direction so they face into each other. It doesn't really matter which way they come, you can spin them. So grab this without marring the finish and just rotate them, okay? You're going to rotate them. Now remember, you're not trying to pull it out, you're just trying to rotate it. Although if you want to take this pin out and use it in another project for like a motor or something, you can rip them out usually easier to get them hot and rip them out. Okay, so you see what I did there? So basically, oh, we can't do that. We could do this, and that would work really nice, right? Well, then how do you get the second one on? Well, you don't do it that way. You have to rotate these also, okay? So we're going to rotate those in. And there's there's a million ways to skin this can. You can put a small lead on there if you want. Um, oh, shoot. I'm sorry. you got to keep rotating these. We're going to go all the way around with these ones. One of them gets rotated, one of them doesn't, okay? So you see the positive signs on there? You're going to use that. Now this is going to rest like that, or it's going to rest like that, okay? That'd be great if you were just doing a male to female, like for an extension cord or something. But we're not doing that. We're doing two of these. we got to get them together like that, okay? So what we're going to use for that, because it'll get mighty hot, is we're just going to use something like this. Just a simple clamp. You could use a chip clip if you wanted Okay. Now, if you want a parallel adapter, you got to be a little bit more careful about that because they don't always line up quite so good. Okay. So we're just going to rotate the other side, just like this, guys. Super easy. And then make sure all your pluses are going the same direction. Okay. Really easy. Now you want to line those up so that they're square and they take up the least amount of space unless you've got some reason spatially in your next plane or whatever. And then you'll just kind of set these on here however it makes best sense and then you can kind of reposition things. Okay. Now I normally don't use flux on a project like this um, just because you don't have to use it if you have flux core solder you shouldn't need it but it does help a lot on something like this. So if you just kind of dip them into the flux nothing you don't need a ton of it you just need a little bit and really you don't need any it just makes it easier so I don't know about you guys but I tend to do everything the hardest possible way um, but sometimes it's nice to just do it the easy way if the easy way is actually the best way and it does help to flow the solder in there um, otherwise you get the thing so dang hot that you end up melting everything it's kind of a fiasco all right, in fact, I'm going to just throw that away instead of being such a cheapskate. You know, this is probably going to get hot enough. It's not going to like this foam, but we're going to try it anyway. So what I'm trying to do is just get this thing positioned to where it won't fall apart like it's doing. And there's two ways to do that. You can either get the first one soldered and just kind of hold it up, or you can use another tool to hold it. And that's why I grabbed this. It's got the wedge shape to it. We'll try this. Okay, we got it ready to go. Soldering iron's hot. Probably like way overheated to be honest. We'll go in here and clean it. Okay, so it fell down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hold my workpiece here. I'm just gonna get this. I gotta get something heavy on it. It's wanting to tip up on me. And then I'm gonna move it down. So it's flush with the ground. Okay, that's good. Because this thing will be in the position it's in now into perpetuity. Okay, so what you want to do is get that heat across multiple terminals. Now this pin, this sharp end is probably not the best way to do this today, but it's fine for what, you know, for one connector. Okay, see how that works? 
See how the solder bridged? That's what we want. Now I'm actually going to flip it over real quick now that it's held together. And I'll just do the other side while the other positive side is holding on to everything for me. Okay, once you get that heat starting to dissipate and pass through all that together at the same time, then the solder will actually flow down into the middle. Okay? Just get it in there. Okay, now what you want to do is let that set for a second. You don't want to spill all the solder out, okay? And um, so we'll just take a look at it real quick. This is the first thing you want to do is just double check that you're not dripping through, which we're not yet. So we can go ahead and do the other side now, and we'll come back and add a little bit more on the other end. Okay, clean the tip. Scrub it clean, then come back for some more action. Okay. Oh, that was cool. The smoke went right in the camera. So we got that nice and smooth. And smoothness doesn't really make or break the connection. It's more of a symptom of having the solder. It was flowing. Okay. So what I did on my last one is I reached in and just melted it from the back side so that it flowed to the maximum surface area without filling these holes because that's just going to add a bunch of weight. And, I mean, unless you're trying to make it heavy like in a car or something, you don't really want to add weight typically, especially not on a plane. So I'm going to go a little bit heavier on the solder. Not lots, a little bit more. And we're just going to reach in here and just touch the back side of the connector and just heat it up. Okay, done. You don't need to do very much because it's already going to have a propensity to want to flow into that joint. A chisel tip would be better for this, guys, not this sharp tip, but at the moment I just haven't switched mine over because I dropped it in the vacuum the other day in my shop back. That kind of sucks, pun intended. Okay. Now, this isn't really a big problem for me right here, but you notice that they're not perfectly aligned. It's very hot, that's for sure, but that's okay with me. Got a really good connection, lots of surface area. Sure, you could fill those up with solder if you really wanted to waste your time. But um, now there's a trick of the day, guys. As usual, there's a trick of the day involved. And that is I'm going to take this hot glue while it's still warm and just shoot it through the middle. Okay? That's all the more I'm going to do for isolation. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, why the heck did you put glue in there, Brian? Well, I put glue in there for extra fun, of course. Now, what that glue is going to do for us is that's going to make so that if there's a complete failure, it's going to hopefully slow down a complete short circuit to the extent that something cools down hypothetically we can then fix the problem before it becomes a real problem all right so hey asw wing i'm gonna grab the uh heat shrink box out got some pretty big heat shrink here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna slip that over we'll probably cut it to about the same size because that was a good size okay now remember when you cut heat shrink it's already shrunk if it's on something else right so you want to go just a little bit bigger so that the shrink ratio doesn't get you in trouble. Okay, this thing is still pretty hot, okay? Like, really hot. Jeez, that's crazy. So if you want to try to cool one of those down, by the way, one of the best ways you can do it is grab a pair of forceps or something that'll clamp on and just grab onto one of the pins, okay? And that will dissipate the heat through this large heat sink. And uh, since these are in parallel, you only really have two points that you're trying to touch. You can do the same thing with any of these pins, okay? And that will dissipate the heat quicker. But I don't really care about the heat being hot right now. It's not a big deal. So, we're going to slip this over. I found that the corners, 
they like to go where the corners are, which is fine. It won't defeat anything, so we'll do it that way. That's so crazy. I swear I cut it closer than that. So you don't want to get down into this area where it has to slide into another connector because that could compromise your ability. And we'll just trim this later if we need to. So then I'll grab this. And we'll just go ahead and slide into those pins. Clamp the forceps. You could use the torch if you really wanted to be more efficient, but this is nice because you get a little bit better control of where the heat goes. Be careful about sharp edges when you're doing this. You got a big piece of heat shrink like this, it's more prone to ripping. Um, so just be aware. Okay, that's enough of that. Turn this down, make sure you're not going to catch any planes on, on the ceiling above you. I'm going pretty quick, but that's because I want to try to get a lot of heat on it. Dang it, I overheated it. I bet you guys saw that when it smoked, it started coming undone. Okay, we're going to try it again. We'll come right back. And it never fails, guys, because this is like the giant heat shrink that I really got a little bit of. Never fails. It's always the one that breaks. It doesn't happen that often to me. Really, I promise. Okay, so that should be pretty close. All right, we're going to get this cooking. A little bit of heat. want it to be way up here this time. And uh, we'll just bring it in a little bit closer. I'm using my hand to tell how much heat's getting up there. And I really, really want to heat up where the uh, positive and minus signs are. This could compromise the heat shrink again, but I'm, I think it's worth it. This is a really high quality lighter. Okay, good enough. So, there you have it, guys. Now you can take that, and this is a parallel connector, meaning that you're going to have two batteries that, let's say they're 2200 milliamp. 3S packs, then you would plug them both in together like this, right? And uh, then you'd be adding the capacity, but not changing the amount of S, so like the amount of cells in series, okay? Now the reason I have two of these, beyond just being awesome to have extra stuff when you need it, is that I eventually would like to get the Carbon Z Cub. And that requires a 6S pack, but I don't really use 6S packs for anything right at the moment. So what I can do then is I can take a 2200 milliamp 3S 60C pack. I can take two of those, making a 4400 milliamp 3S 60C. And then I can put those together. And I can put two of these in series. So then we have a 6S 4400 milliamp with 60C current rating. And there you have it. So that's the reason for that. Worked pretty easy. Make your own if you want. Just be careful. Make sure you get a good solid connection. Um, and the thing I like most about this is if I wanted to take this apart for something else, it's super easy to take it apart. So... Don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. Appreciate you being a part of this experience. Don't forget to come back for more. Hey, YouTube. Back again with just an update for you. Um, I built these two parallel plugs for my batteries so I could take an XT60 um, from the battery into each of these terminals and then I just get one output so whatever capacity the batteries are you add them together and then this was the parallel adapter I was or excuse me the the uh, series adapter that I was talking about so this would take like two 3S packs and it would make them into one 6S pack or more specifically you could do 
in this case you could take four 3S packs and you can make one large 6S pack. And the idea here is you would have enough capacity. Now one thing you got to be careful about is that just because you can hook all your leads together does not mean that the, these leads can be whatever size. Um, you would have some risk of having a component failure if you get too aggressive. But I just have bags like this that have tons of little connectors and stuff. You know, so if I'm out at the flight field and I need, this is a special one for a 5S pack that I built from one of the planes that my grandpa built. Um, so I could charge his 5S, uh, 5,000 milliamp hour pack. And um, basically I just have these ready to go, you know, like an EC2 to Dean's or key connector and just, just tons of these things. I just have all these things ready to go and I've got them when I need them. But I just wanted to show you that real quick. Obviously the difference between uh, a parallel and a series connector is that the parallel adds up the capacity of the packs. So like if you have a thousand milliamp hour pack and a thousand milliamp hour pack, whether it's one, two, three, four S, it doesn't matter, it's still be, it'll still be a four S output over here because there's still four cells in series. But then those four cells and these four cells end up in parallel and you end up with an output that's 2,000 milliamps. So just add them together, but when you take and do the series, then you would potentially add, add, and then putting them in series, then you multiply the 2,000 now, and 2,000 becomes uh, still 2,000. But your output is instead of two plus two, S becomes 4S, the 4 and 4 would become 8S. So you just kind of have to, you can do all sorts of cool things with this. And I just wanted to show you that. You can also take and daisy chain these together. Um, like I said, there is going to be a limit, you know, on how much, you know, current you can subject these connectors to before they would fail. Um, and, and a failure point of these connectors is, is always going to be determined by how hot you can make the connector before the terminals melt and potentially short. That could be very dangerous. Plus, it makes it really hard to unplug them if they're melting. So then you can say bye-bye to your plane and bye-bye to the car that it's sitting in. That would suck. Hopefully that never happens to anybody out there. So be careful. Enjoy. Don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. Come back for more.